Welcome back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be taking a quote-unquote final look at the Springfield Armory Hellcat Pro. Now, for those that are not aware, this is a 3.7 inch barreled semi-automatic 15 round capacity in the flush fit magazine, nine millimeter defensive handgun that is designed and oriented towards those who are of the concealed carry mindset. They want a slimmer, thinner, lighter, low profile gun, but they still want full-size combat handgun capabilities. So with the Hellcat Pro, Springfield brought to market pretty much a gun that checks all of the boxes when it comes to a concealed carry firearm, especially in 2022 at its introduction and continuing on here into early 2023. You have a laser light accessory rail, you are optics ready cut, for shield RMSC as well as adapter plates. And you have out of the box, U-notch rear and high visibility tritium front sight. Although as you can see on this gun, it does not have the stock sights left on it. Out of the box, dead ass reliable, really handy, really, really nice handgun for concealed carry gives you pretty much everything a Glock 19 or similar sized handgun does, but in something that can be much easier to conceal carry for some and definitely shaves the weight off while still maintaining that highly desired upper capacity for a nine millimeter handgun in a concealed carry roll of 15 plus one rounds in a flush fit magazine. Springfield does not currently have magazines that extend that capacity but if you purchase something like the hive technologies base plate extension for the hellcat you will get 18 round mags the caveat to that is there isn't really a spring designed for that capacity so you get plus three but you don't get reliable lockback unless you stretch the spring and well that's not necessarily that great of a thing but without further ado let's put a few shots on the plate real quick and then get into what I've done to the handgun on the truck tailgate and discuss how it's done over the last 1100 or so rounds. It's a sewing machine, that's for sure. To start, let's take a look at the wear and tear on the exterior of this handgun as we are looking at about three months worth of carry and constant shooting again especially after today's rain session we'll be at the 1100 brown mark i'm being a little bit conservative she's probably more towards the 1250 point but we're going to call it 1100 because i've kind of lost track of rounds and well we we don't want to overshoot on how many rounds we've actually put through it but yeah about three months of constant carry handling and shooting how is it done well we can see that we've got some holster wear. Oh no, we've got a little bit of drag wear when the light came a little loose and started dragging forward on the draw, etc. cetera. Uh, we've got some handling marks on our extractor, but overall, she's not looking bad. I mean, just the edges are getting a little bit worn. See that we're doing pretty good here. And we'll take a look at the internals in a minute, but it's a concealed carry handgun and I practice with it a lot, obviously. So, especially with ammunition prices as they are currently when you're dropping at best a quarter a shot on nine millimeter ball, 
Well, putting 1,100 rounds through a gun is no small feat for the average man here in 2023. I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just saying, hey, if, if I could put 5,000 rounds through this gun and give you a more long-term high round count uh, review of it, I would. But right now, I'm just going to give you the 1,100 round update. So far, it's been fantastic. We can see we've got our Hive Technologies plus three base plate here and our standard flush fit 15 rounders. The holster of choice is the Works M6. This has been a fantastic holster. This is with, with the TLR7 sub by Streamlight, and we can see that right here. This light has done very well. It's lived on the gun for the past 700 rounds, and it's been fantastic. As far as our optic goes, we have the Swamp Fox Sentinel, and this is the manual adjusted version. I have lost zero with this uh, twice in 1,100 rounds. Once uh, was from, I don't know what, another time it took a solid impact. I, I dropped the slide while I was uh, cleaning it, went right on the floor, took it on the hood, and all it did was shift the point of impact up. Uh, the last time it lost zero, it just drifted itself right, and I was getting about a two-inch deviation uh, too far left. And that was a quick fix with the multi-tool. So, so far, been a super durable sight. I do have the protective hood there. Uh, you don't have positive clicks, but as far as living on the pistol, it seems to be doing pretty well. We don't have any delamination. We don't have any issues regarding durability uh, as far as round count goes thus far. So pretty happy with it so far. Seems to be a good optic, especially for the price point. The light is doing quite well. We have night vision lower one-third sights, but they turn into lower one-fifth when you add a little bit of height, such as a hollow sun with adapter plate or, of course, the Swamp's Fox Shield for the Sentinel model. We've also added an Apex trigger kit. Now, that made the trigger more bearable, but it turned it from being a hard wall into a break into a big mush. So about 300 rounds ago, I had two light strikes on this AAC, Pavel State Armory, 124 grain ball, and both of them went off on the second strike. So I had to recut, I had to rechamber the round and strike it again for it to go off. They were definitely like primer strikes. So I didn't like that apex spring. And if I'm carrying a gun, I want it dead ass reliable. I'll give up a little bit of good trigger pull for dead ass reliability. We've gone back to the factory spring. Everything's kind of cleaned up just from use. And we can see there with this apex trigger installed and its sear return spring, we get nice take up, we hit a wall. If we really press through and try to be precise with it, we're gonna get a little bit of building creep. It's gonna take up a little bit more and right about there's a little bit of squish and oh, there it goes. So if you're used to shooting striker fires, it's not the worst, it's not the best, but it is very serviceable and it won't go off when you don't intend it to. And you're probably not gonna feel that damn trigger if you ever get in a situation where you have to draw and implement this firearm in the first place. Other than that, the gun is, own stock. I mean, yeah, at this point, there is a trigger, trigger blade, and sear spring in there. Yes, the apex spring eventually gave me two light strikes out of a total of like 900 rounds, uh, so, or, or 800 rounds, so we are swapping back, and now no problems. Ergonomics of the gun are pretty excellent. I think the controls are just the right size. For my beefy hands, it's not that big of a handgun, but it really feels great in the hand. Magazines are just dead ass reliable. I mean, these things are just stinking the bomb. And I really would have a hard time seeing that they would wear anything out besides the springs. So getting fresh springs, if you shoot your gun like crazy, definitely a good idea. Uh, it's a lot easier to cock now. You can see I can cock it one hand, or excuse me, operate the slide cock it. There's some FUD lore right there, or some FUD vernacular. FUD vernacular. FUD vernacular. That's, that's exactly what, right. <laughs> but we're looking good overall. Muzzle crown has been fantastic. It's really worked really, really well. So we're going to pop her apart here, because I unfortunately don't have my proper tripod for this. And we're going to take a look at the internals. All right, we've got our takedown lever up, slider forward. Pull the trigger, off she comes. So if you're one-handed man, you probably do this. 
And of course, because it doesn't take much to strip a Glock pattern striker fired handgun, there we go. So let's take a little bit of a closer look here. We can obviously see that we've been fired quite a bit. Yeah, she's taken up some wear and tear, but really it's not that bad. And it's just made the gun exceptionally smooth. Cleanup has been very easy. That polished ramp there, you can see. I had about a four or 500 round string where I just did not clean or lubricate this guy. It worked perfectly fine. Never had a single issue with it. She's definitely going to be good for those, uh, those of you who do not take care of your carry guns. Hive Technologies base plate really gives you something to hang on to again. And the only problem is lock back with those extra springs. I don't really know what else to show you as far as internals. Slide rails are slicked up at 1,100 rounds. Everything looks pretty good. She's been dead-ass reliable. Everything really works pretty fantastic. She's easy to take care of if you've ever broken yourself into tearing apart a... Striker fired handgun, she's not much different than a Glock or anything else. So nothing to, to really write home about in that regard. But as far as functionality, ergonomics, and reliability, it's exceptional. Let's slap her back together and get back to popping some plates. So I guess the long story short, and this is a more brief review than I typically do, but this gun has been absolutely dead ass reliable to the point of it being boring and it's fairly accurate when you're accurate when i'm off i know i'm off you zero your optic or get to understand your iron sights in the sight picture you want especially if you're doing something aftermarket and not the stock sights and you just start practicing and this gun from the draw well i'm not the fastest and Tonight, it's cold out here in early March in central Nebraska out on the plains. I can still take and put on four or six inch plates at 15 to 30 yards as long as I take my time, have the right presentation and get that dot centered. Just push out and clear the rack. the rack but i can tell you that last shot i saw the dot move to the right as i was breaking the shot we've got uh we got three rounds left so let's let's get redemption and clear the center of the plate real quick there we go and you can see we did not get locked back on our 18 rounder yep so we're slamming home 18 rounds is great if they'd lock back reliably you definitely could carry with it in the pipe but because the spring isn't long enough it's not providing just quite enough tension to get that slide stop up high on an empty mag so it is what it is but i will tell you that it really is a very comfortable handgun to utilize and carry the texture is aggressive but not too much so i do have if i'm not wearing an undershirt and keeping that between me and the gun um, it has been in appendix carrying and I've, I've actually come to enjoy appendix carrying this gun um, it's actually come to rub me a little bit and cause a little bit of rashing a little bit of irritation on my skin but i mean that's a pretty minor issue overall uh whereas something like my bretta 92 x centurion pretty much will cheese grater your skin off fantastic fantastic combat grips but man you want an undershirt between you and those that grip texture with this it's not absolutely necessary but for longer durations of carry i definitely recommend having some way to keep that off your skin just so it's not bothering you and causing you to constantly adjust it the m6 works holster has been very very good to me good retention there's not really any issue. Obviously, that's not a loaded mag, but you get this thing cinched upright, and she's not going to drop the gun. Good, good draw tension. Really great concealed carry holster. Really simple. Um, for the price point, not bad either. Pretty happy with it. 
overall the entire concealed carry system that this handgun pretty much becomes is fantastic. I, I keep saying that word, but it really is fantastic. Yeah, the trigger still kind of sucks, but that Apex trigger, while it was a lot better to have that mush, it was not as nice to, um, to have a couple of light strikes. That makes me concerned. So you go back to the factory spring and voila, no problems at all. I'm sure somebody out there has had terrible time with their Hellcat Pro, but uh, from what I can say with my example, my sample size of one, it is fantastic. There are tons of stuff out there for customization, for adaptation to what your shooting skills are and, and styles are. Uh, you can pretty much put your choice of optic on it if you want to put a red dot on it. I think the TLR7 sub is probably the best light for it, but it's not an absolute mandate. If you want to go with a Surefire brand or you want to go with something else like an Olight or whatever you choose, that's fine as well. Um, I think my biggest gripe, my biggest gripe about the gun, minor one at that, the slide serrations, I mentioned this in the first video I did, they are just not that good. They, they, just, they just are not. Um, they are slick. They are hard to get on and they make if you try to grab back here in any way shape or form they really make you want to run off the optic which probably isn't the best idea uh, so i i tend to do forward slide serrations for press checks um, or racking the gun but they it's like they tear into your skin a little bit but they're not aggressive enough to let you really get a hold of it so you really got to pinch and pull uh, Springfield would do better in a Gen 2 of this or a revised version to have the Hellcats have a more aggressive checkering or line for cocking serrations, I guess you could call it. Um, just put them closer together. Do the same thing. And just put them closer together. Get them to bite your hand a little bit better. But it's something you can train and work around, so I guess it's not a fault. It's just a complaint. The Hellcat Pro, guys... Deadass reliable, fantastic concealed carry gun in my opinion and experience thus far. Should anything change, I will be sure to keep you up to date. If you'd like to see more of content like this, quick and down and dirty, or long drawn out and monotonous, <laughs> we've got it all here. So hit that like button, hit subscribe, and be sure to stay up to date with us all here at American Arms Channel. As always, God bless, keep your powder dry. I'll see you in the next video.